If you look at the references linked to our project, you might think, well, setting up the global lights, the let's say global illumination is not that hard. It seems pretty flat, to be honest. It's just white light coming from behind the windows. But if you look closer at the stairs, for example, you can see there are actually pretty complex shadows uh, visible in this area, same as when you look at the staircase, there is a very interesting shadow coming from those elements here. This might be caused by the sun, this might be caused by the lamps used by the photograph. Uh, but anyway, I think it's pretty interesting effect and it would be interesting trying to get the same effect in our scene. So let's see what we can do in terms of setting up the global lights themselves. To create the most, most basic global light setup, we simply go to this icon here, or we can also in the shader editor, go to this little section here and change the object settings to world. And as for now, you see nothing here, but as soon as we click use notes button, there is this very, very simple node setup visible. And you can see the default color for some reason is 25% white or gray. Um, let's just switch to the rendered view and see what it does. It's basically this very dark image, what we have. So by increasing the color to 100, you can see an instant change and well, at least we have some light right now. However, if we disable the staircase elements from the view and I'm pressing Control B and selecting this region here just to see it closer, when we move to this nice interesting stair area, you can see there is very little shadow happening. If we Even if we increase the strength of the global light to 5, the shadows somehow are visible maybe in the upper section here, but they are very diffused and very different to nice vibrant shadows we have here. So what is a solution to this problem? The easiest way to cast those kind of shadows would be adding an extra light source to the scene, but that makes things a bit more complicated. Perhaps it is possible to create this interesting effect by influencing, by changing the global scene background settings themselves. So there are two approaches to that. We could try to create Blender only node setup, or we can use HDR image, which I also have covered this topic uh, in one of the Chuck for tutori tutorials. It will be linked below this video. But let's just see if we can uh, recreate this kind of setup for our scene and check the results it gives. So I'm going to use Choco for HDR image 05, which will be also linked below the video. As you can see, it is this cloudy weather kind of scenario with a little bit of light coming through the sky, through the clouds. But in general, this should give us uh, this very diffused white kind of gray illumination, similar to what we have here in the scene. So to begin the setup, first we need to go to the node editor here. I'm going to press shift A, go to the texture and select environment texture node. I'm going to place it somewhere and link it to the color source. Now, when I go to the rendered view immediately, um, this will be the effect and you should be getting familiar with this color because it indicates that there is no texture in a source of the color uh, somewhere around the scene. So since this is a global illumination and there is no texture, it paints everything with this kind of light. So let's now load an environment texture. I'm going to my folder and selecting the lower resolution LR version of the texture because we don't need 
actually a high resolution image for a decent looking illumination setup. Let's now switch to the rendered view again. And the results should be visible instantly, almost instantly. So as you can see, this is something an HDR map is available. It's able to generate simply by plugging it in as a background color. You need to remember, I'm gonna go to wireframe view. You need to remember that it has to be a environment texture, not an image, image texture used as a color source for the background because otherwise it's not going to work. You're going to have a very flat image without any realistic illumination and you might be thinking you're doing something. I mean, you might be thinking you're doing everything correctly, but the th truth is um, that's a common mistake for people who are just starting with uh, interior or architectural visualization in general. So please keep in mind, we need to use environment texture here. So let's get back to our preview again. And if your viewport is quite slow, as in my case, especially when I'm recording this video, you might see the mouse cursor is jumping uh, sometimes, we might consider changing some of the performance settings here. So a bit slower. I went to the rendering settings the same place where we switched EV rendering engine to cycles. Then I scroll down to the performance tab. And here, if we close everything, uh, yeah, we have to go to the viewport settings. So performance viewport, and we can change the pixel size to half of what it is normally meaning meaning it will simply render just a bit faster but the image preview we have is a little bit more blurry and the reason it's blurry is because blender divides the normal standard one uh, standard resolution of what you see in your viewport and it divides it by two by four by eight so it's natural it, it becomes blurry but it doesn't mean we cannot set up the lights correctly with this kind of preview because we need a general information how the scene looks more or less. I would say uh, keeping the setting of two is enough. It should work uh, even on a slower computers, but if necessary, you can even go lower down to eight. Okay, since we already added our HDR map, Let's see what else we can do with it. It would be interesting when I go to the uh, outside of the interior. You can see our scene, by the way, in this way. It would be interesting to see how the interior looks if we rotate the texture, the background texture, and try to cast the light from a bit different angle. So in order to do that, we need to create a quite simple node setup and I'm going to begin by pressing shift A again, going to input and texture coordinate. So I'm going to put this node here and plug the generated input to the vector node here. Now I'm going to move the node here to make a little bit more space. I'm going to press shift A again, go to the vector uh, up vector nodes here and select the mapping. So this is the setup we need to create in order to have a little bit more control over our HDR map. Now when I change this Z rotation value to let's say 90, it's gonna take a few seconds but my, uh, my viewport will update and you can see the background of our HDR map changes. So it's rotating within the uh, Z axis. And if we have a little bit more strong illumination generated by the HDR map, 
there might be shadows and, and light beams invisible in the scene. Since we are using this very diffused light, well, that's, that's unfortunately not the case for our scene, but I'm rotating this HDR map in order to see if I'm able to improve the shadows around the stairs here. So you can see it actually generates, it casts this very interesting shadow in this area. So let's see what happens if I change the angle, let's say to 270, it actually got darker. So maybe let's go to 120 and it became brighter again, but the shadows, as you can see, they are mostly cast upwards. It's again, different to what we have in our image because the shadows go both up and down. So we still need to think how to improve that. So we are getting back again to the additional light sources solution. And you might be asking like, why didn't you go with that from the very beginning? And my answer is, um, the simpler you keep the illumination illumination uh, set up in your scene, the better, because it, first of all, renders faster. And second of all, is easier to set up. So, I'm always trying to check if I'm able to achieve a realistic illumination in my scene using just the environment setup only. When it's not possible, then I'm taking another step further. So I'm going to add a light to improve the shadows in this area. The thing is, if we plan adding the lights to our scene, the additional light sources, it's not recommended to mix them with the HDR map because you could argue with that probably, but I personally prefer not to mix uh, external light sources with the HDR map. So if I want to, let's say, use a sun lamp, sun, uh, a lamp that imitates the sunbeams, I don't like mixing it with the HDR map. And that means we need to change this setup. But don't be afraid, it doesn't mean we worked for vain. Uh, the node setup we have in Blender gives us a lot of flexibility. So I can simply unplug this one node here. And now I'm back to my original color only. So anytime I want, anytime I'm working on the scene and I want to move back and see how the HDR illumination looks like in comparison to the setup I'm, let's say, creating in the next step, I can always do that. I can simply plug and unplug the nodes uh, in my scene. So, and, and yet, uh, you learn how to set up the HDR image. So let's now see what we can do with the, with the other nodes available in Blender. And one extra node I like using for the environment or for the illumination setup in particular is hidden under the converter and black body here. So what the black body node does in general is setting up the color in regards to the uh, temperature value we can set up here. And this value is, I hope, physically uh, because I never checked it, to be honest, but I, I, it's really related to the physical temperature values you have, let's say, on the light bulbs. So you can see the default temperature of 1500 is pretty warm, so to speak. So if we increase it to, let's say, 4500, it becomes more neutral and if you read a Wikipedia article on the color temperature, there are actual physical, kind of physical uh, values we can apply in the black body node. So uh, sticking to around 600, 500, uh, 6,500, sorry, case gives us, should give us a daylight overcast lining scenario. If I type this value here, you can see we are more or less back to the simple uh, white color we just we could normally set up here. But 
Um, I think sticking to black body and using the values available, well, here you can also find them in many other places, that gives us a little bit more realistic touch to the scene because if you also set up the light colors for the lamps, for example, you could obviously use a simple, well, wheel, color wheel like this, but I think setting up the temperatures with the actual physical values will always produce better looking and more realistic results. So as for the environment light setup, I would say that's basically everything we can achieve. Um, we have seen that the HDR map didn't bring us the results we wanted. If we simply increase this value here, it gives us more light in general, but it's more of the, the same kind of light. So again, we see there is no shadowing happening here around this area when we compare it to the reference. You can also see there is probably some additional light source somewhere behind the photographer casting this light on the counter here, which is not happening in our scene, I think. That's why I want to thank you for watching this video and invite you to another one where we will add additional light sources to our scene and hopefully nail the view we are looking for. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender-ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender-exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofort store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.